So today, we're going on an adventure. <laughs> yes. I feel like this is our first real vlog of 2021. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's been probably about four months, actually. Yeah, so we've been, you know, Working. Laying low. Yeah, yeah, working, staying stationary. We were home for three months during the holidays. Uh, nothing exciting to vlog about there, that's for sure. And then we hit the road in January, but then we were just stationary with friends working. So we are finally kind of starting to pick up our travel plans for the year, keeping them really flexible. As you can tell, it's a little windy out here. So. Anyway, we could tell you more about that. <laughs> Where we're going and with whom. Yes, and we want to show you this boondocking location, but we're all loading up. We're about to hit the road. As Jason said, we're going on an adventure. And where are we going? Organ Pipe National Monument. Let's go. Estes Canyon hike. Whole, we're, whole loop or something? Yeah, we're a little out of breath if you couldn't tell. So we stopped at the ranger station to just have them recommend, you know, something for the afternoon for six people and a baby. And she's like, this is an easy 3.1 mile loop hike. She did not mention the switchbacks <laughs> that we just came up. They never do. <laughs> Poor Kyle has. <laughs> A baby on his back. <laughs> so anyway, if you do this Estes Canyon hike, just keep in mind there are some switchbacks, but... It's absolutely beautiful and absolutely worth it. If you can't tell, you're just in this canyon with all of these saguaros and the Oregon pipe cactus and you're walking through them and this like really mountainous, true desert. Yes, absolutely. And then obviously, I don't think we even told you who we were here with yet, but we have the Mortons and the Bradys, which is why I said Kyle has a baby on his back because their little baby Nora is in their little baby pouch. All right. Oh well, man, the group behind the us is catching up. We gotta go. It's pretty windy up here if you couldn't yeah. tell. <laughs> but behind us is Mexico. So that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So with those switchbacks, was the juice worth the squeeze? I think so. <laughs> Especially even the wind is really cool because the cactus makes this weird like whistle noise as the, the wind goes through all of the different cactus thorns. Yes, we have stopped and listened to that a couple times. And some of this area, like the Ocotillo, can we find, oh look, there's a little one right here. This like stringy looking uh, cactus is called Ocotillo and it's in bloom right now. However, we read in the little pamphlet that May, June, and July seems like the best months to be here because the rest of the cacti kind of go into bloom and the bats come to eat the blossoms and yep. the nectar. It's really cool. It's so, also the hottest time of the year to be here. It apparently. is. It is, but you know, 
I don't know. If anyone is comes during that time, tell us if it? the yeah. juice is worth the squeeze to come then. But uh, there's a little QR code at the front of the visitor center where you can get a guide. So we've done this 20 mile loop driving to get up here to this hike. And we've been reading the guide to each other as the little stop signs show up the numbers. So definitely get the guide because it explains so much more about the animals, the vegetation, and what you're looking at. So it is a little chilly, so we're gonna keep moving. <laughs> It is day two of exploring Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. And today we decided to go to a spot that is called Quito Bonito. And it is actually the most southern part of the monument. And it is a mile away from the Mexico-US border. So you can actually see Mexico, which is really cool. So it follows along the border for quite a while and then, uh, or 15 miles, and then we get to Quito Benito. <laughs> so we'll show you what's there. And then on our way back, I'm really hoping that we'll have time to stop and go to, on another hike because on the map here, the ranger told us that this hike is the only place that you can see Sunita cactus in the entire monument. And the picture of a Sunita cactus, like on the little pamphlet, doesn't look too thrilling, but come on, when it's the only place you can see it, you have to go see it, right? <laughs> made it to Quito Bikito Springs here, one of the most southern things you can see here in the monument. And this is a natural spring. It's been here for about 16,000 years and it has provided water for anyone moving through the land since then, as well as all of the animals. So we're sitting at about 1,100 feet here and so far we've already seen a variety of birds as well as a little turtle. So. This is a beautiful area. I highly recommend making the drive out here to see it. And now we'll go ahead and show you a little bit more. recommend this area well worth the 15 mile dirt road out it's a well-maintained dirt road so don't worry about the drive and the walk is like maybe a hundred no no, no like, like 500 feet it's okay I was gonna it's, say closer to like half a mile but yeah, all right. our estimates very short are very rough here um, so I was trying to look up more information on this little spring because there's no like literature or signage around here and I learned that there are actually four endangered species here and we saw three out of the four today. Yeah. So we saw the mud turtle, we saw Kito Bikito pup fish, pup fish. <laughs> and then they have a plant out here called the desert caper and that is endangered as well. So we saw the desert caper. Yeah. But what we missed was the Howarth 
white butterfly. Yeah, and I did see some, like all of the uh, leaves had a bunch of little holes in them. So like a caterpillar was gnawing on them. So I'm sure if we waited here another oh. month or two, we would be seeing some Butterfly. butterflies. So that once again, coming back in that, in that like, spring, yeah. early summer time frame. Would, would be the best. Also, it's pretty crazy the spring, like, it's just all desert. Yeah. And then even the spring, like, you could, there's just a little bit more plants around it, but it's still kind of yes. hidden. If you didn't know it was there, you could easily go right past it. Yes, and we are right on the border here. I don't know if you can see it, but right behind us is the wall. So, and the, there's a Mexico freeway over there. So it's really funny to have this, like, highway slash monument <laughs> slash spring yeah. with like two different environments. Yeah, because <laughs> all the way over here is just desolate, like <laughs> national monument wilderness. It's like a biosphere park. Yeah. And then you have the wall and the freeway. Yeah. So. It's still beautiful over yeah. there. Looks exactly like it does over here. Yeah, on the <laughs> other side, it's actually a national park reserve as well. Yes, it was kind of like a sister park. Yeah. It is a sister park. Yeah, and they work together on mm -hmm. the, all kinds of animals that cross the border. Yes, that has been this area. And now we're going to try and go hunt down the Sunita cacti in that one place in the park. You apparently can see it. <laughs> So we've made it to Sunita Basin and we're almost done with our hike. However, have you noticed the lack of Sunita yeah. cactus? I feel like I can see it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, I feel like we've seen one or two like way off in the distance, but I was hoping to see like a ton if this was the only area in the park that you can see them. Yeah. Or at least one close to the trail. Yeah, I feel like I saw more Sunitas driving to Sunita Basin than I've seen in Sunita Basin. Yes, we might actually have to stop on our drive out just so I can get some footage of one. Because <laughs> I wanted to get footage and then I wanted to see it up close to see the difference between the Sunita and the Oregon Pipe Cactus because mm -hmm. they look similar, except the Sunita has like these gray spikes at the top. Yeah, it looks a little bit furrier. Yeah, furrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. But how, how about this hike so far? I think the hike's not bad. It's a 3.1 mile loop and. Yes, and flat. from this spot, you can also get to other areas of the park. If you wanted a longer hike, you could absolutely do that. We took the shortest path, which was 3.1 miles. Yeah. There's and a couple of mines you can get to if you wanted to. Yes. Which are always cool. Exactly. Overall, I guess I would also recommend this hike if you have the time. Otherwise, it might be worth your time to go see some of the mines up close or go on a different hike of the park. Yeah. I'm not like raving about this hike, I no, guess. It's, it's not a bad hike, but it's not. It's had the least amount of people. That's true, and that's always a plus as well. We've only seen one other person on this hike. So we're almost to the parking lot. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Safety, because I know it's going to come up, or it might be mentioned in the comments, about this monument being so close to the Mexican border. When you come into the park, they do have signs uh, you do go through a border patrol checkpoint and the rangers do tell you to just travel together, don't go out on solo trips, um, especially if you're doing the backcountry hikes that are longer and more way off in the distance. But I feel very safe out here. Yeah. Maybe it is because we're in a group of six and today we're in a group of eight because John and Peter were able to travel with us today or come with us today because they were working yesterday so maybe it's mm -hmm. just our large group but it's not like we've seen anything or yeah 
seen anyone to make us feel uncomfortable. Yeah. It's always and, good to be mindful though. Yes. And I think that's always, uh, no yeah. matter where you are in the country. Exactly. So if you've been hesitant to come down here or you're not sure if this monument is worth the visit, I absolutely think it's worth the visit. It is the most beautiful desert landscape we have ever seen. Of all the deserts we've ever been to. Yes. So. And we're from the West Coast. <laughs> So we've seen a lot of deserts. Yeah, this is this is definitely if you've never been to a desert or never seen a cactus, I feel like this is even a better representation of like cactus and and deserts than Saguaro National Park. Yes, believe it or not. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of the Saguaros, I wanted to tell you a little fact I learned or we learned about them is that it takes them 65 years to have their first blossom, and it takes them about 90 years to start growing their first arm, which is crazy to yeah. me. So this one right here is not yeah. even have his first arm yet. This little guy right here, d d like doesn't even have his first arm. He's 10, 10 feet tall. This yeah. guy's what, <laughs> 10, 10, 12 yeah. feet tall. Yes. I'll turn around, I'll show you this one, just so you could see it from a distance. So this guy's got two arms. So he's he's probably over a hundred. <laughs> We've had um, a good time guessing how old the cacti are based yeah. on their arms and their height. So that's why it's so important to preserve this area because they grow so slowly and then they don't even start to blossom and reproduce for 65 years. Anyway, great great monument highly recommend it we're gonna head home we want to show you our boondocking spot and tell you a little bit about that just in case you want to stay there as well back at our boondocking spot we wanted to talk to you about it a little bit in case you're interested in staying here it is called gun site wash on campendium so i will link that below and it is definitely one of the more unique landscapes i feel like we've boondocked in yeah because it is deserty like <laughs> look at this cactus right in front of our rig we've enjoyed that view a ton um and then, you know, it does have a lot of brush and trees out yeah. here as well. So the longest rig reported on Campendium of staying here is 44 feet. As you know, we are 42 feet. So it's very possible to get in here with a big rig. I would recommend that they have a parking area out front before you come across the cattle grate into the official boondocking area. I would park there and scout first. Yeah. We got lucky that, um, you know, the RV geeks were ahead of us, so they came and scouted for us first here. But if you're by yourself, definitely scout first. And yeah, you can get in here. There's plenty of open areas. You don't have to come, you know, needling through the bushes like we did a little bit, but we really wanted to get next to this cactus. So, um, yeah, it's been, as you can probably hear in the background, there is a road, so we're not that far off the road. You will hear some highway noise. And then what are the planes that have been flying over? Uh, there's been both a10 warthogs and i believe f16s all right some sort of f plane yes so you will have some military planes out here and they do early 
uh, flyovers every once in a while. So yes, that's... and they get very close. <laughs> they like it shook the RV one time. So it's but it's been kind of fun. So yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily a con. If you like looking at that kind of stuff, then you'll probably really enjoy it here. Yeah, it's been really nice out here. And uh, although we did get a little chilly spell mm -hmm. last couple of nights, the rest of the time it's been amazing. And during the day it's been amazing. So yeah, there has been a breeze. If you couldn't tell throughout this whole vlog, I feel like it's been windy. So, but not horrible no. you know yeah so and that uh we have our nice setups <laughs> out yes so we've been trying to actually set up camp every time now to force us to get outside yeah and so uh people in our last video asked us questions about these chairs these are brand new chairs for our outdoor setup and uh over the last three years we've tested a lot of different camping chairs not just ours but friends and so we ended up with the club chair being the most comfortable and it's just so big that it kind of like keeps your back warm when you're sitting in front of a fire, which is uh, probably the best thing that's going for it. And it's so <laughs> padded, it's just very comfortable. Yeah. So we'll have Won't links you... for these down below and in the comments, <laughs> but these are Show it off. <laughs> club chairs. Yes, so. these chairs have been awesome. We just like cozy up in them and then yeah. We've been using our fire pit a lot more, so it's been awesome yeah. to have these chairs. Well, I think that's about it with, yeah. you know, the where we where we are, what we did. Yeah. I think, you know, we've been here five nights and I think that's a good amount because we took two days to explore the monument and then the rest of the days we worked, so it's a good balance. Yeah. But if you're down here just to play, I think two days in the monument is plenty of time. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you could probably get a third day in if you really uh, wanted to explore the complete monument, but mm -hmm. two days is like 80%, and that's probably more than most monuments we've explored. Yes, so there are two driving loops yeah. in it, and that's it. So all of the sightseeing is off these two loops. The first drive we did, we did that the first day, 21 miles, I mm -hmm. think. And then the second loop, we only did the out and back to Quito Bikito, but that full loop would have been 41 miles, but you do need a high clearance vehicle, they told us. Yep. I mean, we could have done it, but we just didn't want to be out all day. <laughs> right. So there you have yep. it. Thanks for joining us this week. Yeah. Hope we've inspired you to come down here and boondock and see the National Monument that's down here. Other than that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys. <laughs> okay, you're gonna say your thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you'd stop touching <laughs> your hair. <laughs> okay, wait, it's weird. Yeah. Flopped up here. You can't side part it and then have this part. Help. <gasps> In the rubber. <laughs> I like can't get it off. Oh, oh off. no! Uh -oh. <laughs> what are they called? A puffer fish? No, it's not a puffer fish. Oh. <laughs> so, whoa! <laughs> All right, it is day two of exploring. Working in the pipe? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so we are back at our boondocking spot and we wanted to talk to you about it a little bit. Um, All right, we're, oh my God. <clears throat> All right. Switch. So we've been trying to, <clears throat> God. 